not far from who I am. But men have been not denied that, and you have to ask yourself, well, what did they get in those terms of agreement that they bought into this contract? And what did the women get? And can we possibly unscramble that and come up with a new terms of agreement? Because um, I'm seeing something unusual now, having been a feminist all my life, and that is that in the digital um, economy and world, the men have been demoted to women's status because women know what it's like to be property, generally speaking, to be owned, to be taken care of, whatever. Men don't know that part, but on the internet, nobody cares if you're a dog. They want everybody. They don't care what gender you are. They don't care what nationality you are. They want us all because they can sell us. They can sell the information that you create by your presence on the internet. And it's a huge living for like 10 people. But what about the rest of you? So there's something going on in the terms of agreement that we have to unscramble and figure out what do we want it to be. Anyway, that's my political statement. <laughs> <laughs> You, uh, can I just uh, throw in a quick question? Um, when we met, we spoke about uh, the Native Americans having five genders. You know, that's the male, the female, the two-spirit male, the two-spirit female, and the transgender. And it was only after the advent of uh, the Europeans into North America that uh, the whole concept of male-female kind of became the contract that you referred to. Do you think there is... Um, a role, I mean, maybe you can shed some light on this, uh, on uh, the role that religion may have played in uh, reinforcing that contract and well, the lopsidedness yeah. of it. I, I think uh, that's what I discovered when I went to Ireland. Like, Donna discovered Ireland. I discovered Ireland last November, and she's right. It's devastating and it's beautiful. You feel something coming out of the earth, grabbing you by the feet, and it's like wonderful. Um, and I read a couple of books by some of the scholars talking about, because I knew nothing about Irish history. And this one woman, uh, Mary Condren, wrote a book called The Serpent and the Goddess. And she really takes apart how religion destroyed the matrimonial culture, the old culture, and step by step how they changed all the words that had good meanings to bad meanings. Uh, so uh, I was saying to, I think it was Sharon today, yeah, that I was shocked to see that um, the word prostitute did not have a negative connotation from the start. It, it meant she who stands in for the goddess. Mm. But when the goddess was truncated, that became a bad word. The word whore has a different, also a different root that did not mean what it means today. It was not a bad thing. It was someone that was involved in, in the rituals in the temple from the goddesses, group of wow. goddesses, you know, to divine people. And you can look this up in uh, a book called The Sacred Whore, and you could read The Serpent and the Goddess. You see how they see their culture. But one of the things that Mary Condon really goes after, this is a 1980s book, so women were pretty angry that it's still, we're much nicer now, but uh, she, <laughs> she goes after religion in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> how, you know, all the things that we've learned about St. Patrick and all that, that was a big power grab, you know. And it was even symbolically a big power grab, because why did he chase the snakes out of Ireland? Apparently there were no snakes in Ireland, but the mythology is saying something. It's saying mm. he chased the goddess out, and the patriarchy moved in. So, um, Amazing. there's a lot in there where uh, women were pushed into a certain role, and their circular way of dealing with life, which I talk about with Donna often and, and, and with Jay, it was about birth, transition, death, and rebirth. It was a cycle. And uh, the religions that came along, the Christian and the Hebrew religion, were about death. It was a culture of death. Men were taught that their destiny in life was to die. For their country, for their religion, they're always dying. And the younger the better, but you know, Abraham has to kill his son. Um, and in the Catholic religion, you see a man nailed to the cross and celebrated as this is a good thing. He had to die because his father said to die. And so men are forever dying. They're dying you know, in, in groups, in armies, in countries. 
and um, why are we doing this, you know, and especially in, in the digital age. So I think the cycle coming back, maybe that's why we're all sitting here, because some of your cultures know about generosity, the, the, the female cycle of generosity, about giving life and being humble enough to let go of it and then to believe that you're coming back. And um, the male philosophy, as Mary Condren outlined, is the Christian religion in Ireland, is you die to go to a better place. No wonder this planet is going through what it's, it's going mm. through. And, you know, being dug up and blown up and monetized. It's like the female body is just being totally destroyed. Because there's something wrong with that philosophy. It may have worked for a time, it may have been necessary, we don't know. Um, so I, I'm not even going to say that it's totally off, but at this point, I think it's different because of digital 